I am now on the line with the Seminetti source, Peter Seminetti of the Seminetti source. You can find him on at Seminetti source on Twitter and on YouTube, Seminetti source. Seminetti source, Montgomery is down with an elbow issue. He's having Tommy John. You predicted it. Where do the Yankees go now long term? I don't know, man. It's 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 tough. It's tough, you know. Um, I, you know, during during the live chats and things like that, and just talking to to people on on Yankee Twitter, basically, you know, you get a lot of well, they don't need this, they don't need that because Montgomery's coming back and this and that. And you know, I always gave the fair warning of an elbow injury, even if it was health. Let's just say he was healthy, for an example. He's gonna have to do a, a throwing program. He's gonna have to do a a rehab assignment. Probably wouldn't be back till what August. August, maybe August, um, middle of August, I don't know. But, um, you know, Tommy John surgery, knew it was a possibility. I was expecting him out for the whole year anyway. I was not expecting Montgomery back. That's why I was so adamant on on getting two starting pitchers. But, again, that, that's the that's the age-old question of, of who is it going to be? Who are they going to go after him? I, I don't know. You know, they just played Detroit. We know Fulmer's there. Uh, Archer's going to be available. But, again, I don't think the Rays are – uh, are smart enough, so to say. I think they're another one of these organizations that would just refuse to deal with the Yankees or within their division. So I think that's likely the case for them. And then, you know, you have other teams out there. Um, Hamels, I think, is a definite. I really Yeah, he's going to be I mean, a Yankee. Hamels is going to be a Yankee. N- n- no question about that. And if he's not, I would I'll I'd be shocked, shocked if he's not. I- I'm, I'm there with you. I-, I-, I agree. That's something we definitely agree on 100%. It just makes all the sense in the world. The lefty who's been there is not going to cost the world. You know, there's been the rumors and the circulations around that, you know, if it was a type of deal that they're, they're very interested in a guy like Chance Adams, I don't see the Yankees saying no on something like that. I, I can kind of see them maybe trying to, to, to overhype Chance Adams in the sense of we would rather package him for a guy that's more controllable. But the Yankees, and I, I think Cashman knows this, they, they got to come to the realization that, this is a team that needs a win this year. Exactly, you know, and remember, folks, uh, if we get rid of prospects next year, uh, but chances is we they could deal them for uh, packages of prospects just like they flipped uh, Miller and Chapman. So the Yankees still have a lot of pieces to trade for prospects. So even though they trade away prospects, they could gain back easily. Yeah, and I mean, and I mean, you made you made a good point earlier in the season. I mean, just talking about the idea of maybe a, a Sunny Gray deal in the future. I mean, yeah. in the off season, you never know. The Braves. And I keep bringing up the Braves and teams like the Brewers. Oh, the Braves because, definitely will bite because they love Brandon Jury. He was originally a uh, Brave. And he would make a lot of sense for a team like the Braves, and I'm talking about Sonny Gray for an example, yeah. just because they, they got such a, a big stadium now. They, they got a TV deal they're working on. They're working on so many things in this oh, organization. Yeah, Sonny Gray, yeah, Gray in the National League will be dominant, especially in that uh, ballpark in Atlanta. Yeah, and I'm not saying that that would happen, but yeah. again, you know, th- these are possibilities of not depleting a farm system exactly. and having backup. Oh yeah, exactly. Really that's why. Yeah, rotation. yeah. That's that's why I like the uh, angle of trading away Sonny Gray. But um, let's talk about Jordan Montgomery. Do you think is sounding the alarm on Jordan Montgomery having Tommy John for the simple fact that he's not a high velocity pitcher? Let's say he's coming back from Tommy John and that so-called velocity, which he reaches his peak, what, 93 or whatever, is not there. Do you raise the alarm on that? In, in a sense, yeah. I, I think, you know, people a lot of times, you know, pitchers get Tommy John surge and everybody expects them to be back in, you know, 10 months, yeah. uh, 12 months, 14 months. Uh, let, let's, let's go to an example of a pitcher who you guys, who me and you have talked about a lot, and I've been very big on in, in the offseason, talked about it, uh, Patrick Corbin. Exactly. Patrick Corbin had surgery. It took Patrick Corbin almost two years to get to be the guy he is today. Remember, he wasn't good the last two yeah. years. Last year, you could see it in the second half that I talked about. The slider was back. He has one of the best sliders in baseball. Velocity is dipping down now. A lot of that still has to do with getting that arm back in shape. For exactly, but let's talk about Jordan Montgomery. He was never a high prospect of the Yankees. Correct. He's consistent, though, but I'm saying he he's not really high velocity. So I'm saying, like, yeah. with the Tommy John surgery, he's going to lose, like, what, two or four miles or three? He could he could, he could, could lose or gain. I yeah. mean, that's the other thing. We've seen guys come back from Tommy John surgery that, that are better than they were before. Exactly. And we've seen but, – but to your question, I think a type of surgery like this affects anybody, but – for a guy like Montgomery who doesn't rely on velocity, yeah. it is a little more, it is a little more, I think you're a little less concerned 
of him coming back and maybe topping out at 91, 92. Yeah. He's a guy who could do that anyway. He was doing it this year. So, I, I mean, I'm not concerned in the sense of him losing velocity or, or not being a burner. He never was. But um, hopefully he's a guy who can come back and maybe take a little quicker to get back. But again, I, I think it makes sense for the Yankees to move forward, add guys to this rotation now, and, and look forward to a rotation without a guy like Montgomery because you can't plan on somebody coming back. You can't. Yeah, yeah, I like when Sonny Gray actually pitches good, but we can't. Like, I, I, I don't really trust Sonny Gray. Like, he's so inconsistent, and I don't trust. Him. I don't either. Yeah. I mean, at, at this point, I don't. And you know, yeah. you know this better exactly, than anybody. Yeah. I'm a huge advocate of Sonny yeah. Gray. I love him. Yeah. I, I come into the Yankees. My expectation was. ERA will go up. He's in a big, smaller ballpark. You know, uh, people forget about Oakland. Yeah. Oakland has so much foul territory that regular pop-ups, 10 rows in the seats at Yankee Jack Stadium are out. Yep. And he doesn't get that at Yankee Stadium. So I knew it would go up. I never expected Sonny Gray to be above 5 ERA guy. Never I, I like that idea that now that you bring it up, like trading him to like a team like the Braves just for the simple fact that uh, Sonny Gray still has like one more year on his contract. He still has, you know, teams will want to trade for oh, him. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I know for a fact oh, that yeah. if you include like a Sonny Gray, Brandon Jury, or whatever, in a package with like mid level prospects, a team will bite at that. Yeah, a hundred hundred percent correct. And that's that's the thing. That's the thing about a guy like a guy like Gray or or in the future, however the rotation plans out. We we don't we don't really know what that is, but um. You know they got they got so many options. If you think about them, um, will Bumgarner? I believe Bumgarner pitches either today or yeah. makes his return today or, or something along those lines very soon. But a guy like Bumgarner, if you look at if you look at where the uh, the National League looks like right now, San Francisco's a game and a half out. Yeah, it's so you horrible, know Arizona's yeah. a game ahead. Even though they've been struggling, they're a game ahead. They're, they're still in it. They're still in it. At the end of the day, even the Dodgers, they started off. Horribly, even the Dodgers are, are right back in it now, even though they're not going to have Kershaw for a while again. But if, if you look at how it's going to shape up, it, it's going to be interesting to see what decisions some teams make. You know, people are saying, well, uh, what about Paxton? Why would the Mariners trade Paxton? They're exactly. That's Paxton. Yeah, that's no, actually a picture play. that you locked down, though. That's like the Roy Holiday 2.0, like a picture that comes out of nowhere and becomes an ace. Yeah, I mean, Paxton is finally over, it looks like, some of his injury concerns. But, I mean, they're a game ahead of the world champion Astros. You know, they're and not they're doing it, And they're doing it without Robinson Cano. But they've, they've gotten better without exactly. Cano, which is surprising. But they've played better ball. And, I mean, look at Arizona. I agree. I think if Arizona falls out of it, they, they have to trade Corbin. They nah, trade even, Corbin even, if they're, yeah, even if they're still in it by, like, a few games, I think the D-backs are still going to be sellers just for the simple fact that they have so many players becoming free agents. And they'll just be, yeah, they'll, they'll just be stupid as hell to, to just not trade a few of them. We'll see. I mean, it's the same thing with, with San Francisco. So San Francisco this offseason, we know what they did. They added McCutcheon. They added Longoria. This this is a team. I cannot see them being maybe three to four games out of a wild card spot and trading guys and, and trading a guy like Madison Bumgarner. I can't see that because you just put all this money into building a team right now to try to get there. But then you go ahead and trade your ace. I, I see, can't see them yeah. doing that. I see a team from the National League East actually making the World Series. It could be a Nationals. It could be somebody else. But I see a team from the NL East. Um, yeah, I, I predicted this year it was going to be the Nationals and the Yankees. Yeah. So we'll, we'll yeah, see the how Nationals that goes. Have, like yeah, that. yeah, if the National makes – if they make a few moves here and there, you can see them on the World Series. I'm saying like a real contender. Like they, yeah. they are contenders now. They're going on hot streaks or weak or cold streaks. But – they have been a pretty legit team. No question about it. And they got the rotation to do it. They just need to fix that bullpen some. But guys are going to be available. And, I mean, exactly. I, I and this heard... is Yeah, exactly. And this is why I bring up the point of, like, a potential next year, the Yankees could flip them for more prospects. Yeah, the Yankees got the Yankees got options to to do so much. That's yep. why it's hard. It's hard to look at what the Yankees' future is going to be. They got too many prospects for positions. They got too many players for positions. And, and it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I mean, I can definitely see – Cashman giving in to a team like like the Tigers and giving up Frazier and a couple of others to get Fulmer. I can see that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they got a history of making trades as well. No question about it. I can, I can see them getting Hamels. That just seems yeah, like Hamels, something that... Yeah, Hamels, yeah. Hamels is inevitable. 
I, I would be. I wouldn't be surprised if I wake up tomorrow morning and there's a deal in place for Hamels. That, and, and, that's how yeah, much my, I I could see it happening. Yeah, in my opinion, um, Hamels is the Verlander of last year. Um, Hamels, if you're, he's added on your team, he's literally going to carry whatever team to the playoffs. He could be. He could be. And, and that's the thing. Like I'm, I, I've been trying to explain this to people who who are just the naysayers of Hamels and saying, Nah, nah, nah. He's too old. He's too old. Nah. At the end of the day, it, it, that just it. that doesn't. He still got it. Look, look what he did against the Yankee lineup. Look what he did against the Astros. Yeah, yeah, look um, against exactly. Boston. Against great teams, if you can make the argument that the Yankees have the best lineup in Major League history, and uh, Cole Hamels shut them down. And he he's a guy who isn't gonna shy away from the big spotlight. He's not gonna shy away from the Yankees being in the ALDS Game Five. Exactly. He's, he's not. Gonna he's shy made it to the World Series. He's a World Series champion already. He already made the World Series how many times? Two times, three Two times, times, whatever. Two times. Yeah. And he went to the Texas Rangers thinking they were playoff contenders. So obviously, he is built for that moment. Yeah, and I mean, if you look, if you look around, you look around baseball because the Yankees need stars. If they don't add two. I, I said it already. I'm going to say Cashman is not doing his job. Yep. He needs to add two guys. He, he needed to do it this offseason. And in my, I mean, we know e that. Exactly. Me, me exactly. and you were the number yep. one people talking about this. They need to add starting pitching. We were talking about it in spring because yep. who the hell didn't think he would? Exactly. And he went into the season, offseason, trying to get Sean Otani, and that completely changed, and he didn't get no starting pitching. None at all. We we knew, you know, I reported on the news about, about Patrick Corbin and, and the rumors there. That didn't happen. Garrett Cole was, was the prime example of you cannot let a guy like Cole go to a team like the Astros. Exactly. Do you, th yeah. Do you agree that the Astros uh, pitching analytics, they <laughs> are literally making the case for the Guinness Book of World Records of having oh, no the question. greatest or I, it's either two things I, they're cheating or or their pitching or analytics their is like yeah gods man that's or just crazy man. I mean yeah, yeah I, I've never seen anything like it it, it is it is surprise I don't ever want to though to be honest if Cole was on the Yankees he wouldn't be pitching the same way he's put pitching who's a team cheating but I mean you look at it I mean, Charlie Morton was – I'm not knocking him. Charlie Morton was never good. Charlie Morton was never a guy that was, you know, some dumb – and all of a sudden, Morton is dominating. I mean, you, you look around with that team. Either the analytics are that good and guys have been missing out on certain things. I don't know what to call it. I really don't, but it – He's terrible, man. This is not fine. I can't. I watched every at bat. One was worse than the other. One. This guy's in disgrace. Oh, did you hear but, that? Um, that uh, let's see what your uh, Seminetti senior thinks about uh, Aaron Judge's struggles, real quick. Yeah. Let's we, see. We, let's hear him. Let me play that real quick. He's terrible, man. This is not fine. I can't. I watched every at bat. One was worse than the other. One. This guy's in disgrace. All right. Uh. Getting back, we had a, a, a bit of a technical difficulty. Um, the Mario home run, I can see why the Yankees think he has potential, but he has given the Yankees, what, four or five straight losses? He actually pitched that great his day yeah. as a starting pitcher. But now every time he hits the mound, the Yankees are just bound to lose. I'm not saying he's pitching bad, but they're putting him out there and he's losing. Yeah, I mean, he, he's not the guy that's going to be going forward with him. I mean, I think that, that, should, be, that should be pretty obvious at this point that – you know, he's, he's not going to be the guy moving forward with the Yankees. They're, they're obviously going to yeah. pick up somebody else or a couple of other guys. He's been decent his last couple of outings. But, but I mean, the main problem with the Yankees right now is just the consistency in the rotation. You know, Sabathia is working on, what, four or five bad outings in a row. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what he does tonight. Tanaka's on and off. You know, Gray pitches a gem, and then he pitches three, two bad starts. So, I mean, you got to see more consistency. Luis Severino is unbelievable. You know, he's amazing. If Verlander wasn't in the division right now, he's the leading candidate for Cy Young, no question about it. So, I mean, the Yankees have their ace. They got to get a couple of more guys. If they're able to pick up two guys, this team's going to be very well off. Yeah. Um, if T.C. Zabatia continues to struggle, do you think the Yankees cut him instead of trending away like a Sonny Gray or something like that? I don't think they would. I, I think they'll let him tell. He'll stick around with the team the whole year. Yeah. I don't think they bring him back next year. I think they got to be nuts. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I, I, hopefully, I, I will. I will always express my opinion on it. if he pitched good the rest of the year. I don't bring him back. 
I yeah. just don't. But let's say since point, he's drop yeah, out. since he's been pitching so bad, like in his last five starts, he's allowed over like 16 runs. If he continues to struggle, do you think the Yankees just tell him, "Hey, just stick out there in the bullpen"? And I mean, I yeah, I could, I could, depending on who they get, yeah, I could see that. Because so Gray started pitching yeah. well, and they take they 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 would eventually take somebody out that rotation. Because we all know the Yankees need two, literally two pictures to add on this team so um and they need two good ones yeah so so, <laughs> they need two good so, ones. so we already know herman and montgomery are not going to be long-term solutions so they need to x another picture out yeah so between could, yeah, yes yeah, between sabathia and sunny gray yeah i can I see, see it yeah Sabathia. i can see it no question i mean if he if he really continues the tailspin and, and keeps spiraling down yeah i could definitely see that he's the guy that that moves over i mean i'd walk right up to him i would i look at him in the face <laughs> and I tell him stop it. I would. I tell him stop it. I look at him. I say, Cece, stop. Put, like that. put a button on his hat, press it, and it says stop it. And it says stop it. Whenever he tries to talk and get himself back in it, yeah, I tell yeah. him stop. He needs but, to put a no, stop I mean, it button on his hat. That's it. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I, my my hope is that Sonny Gray pitches like he could. And if Sabat, yeah, the Yankees, is the guy yeah, the Yankees needs out. Yeah, then he's out. The, yeah, the Yankees need Sonny Gray to step up because I don't see CeCe Sabathia at this point in age, like being that consistent. Sure, he's shown signs of being dominant or whatever. Or but uh, the Yankees, like I said, if they had a pick between Sabathia and Gray, you know I don't like Gray that much. I'll pick Gray. Well, yeah, and and to me, to me the big reason why is nobody can argue with me about this because it's true. CeCe Sabathia is a five inning guy, four yeah. inning guy. CC's not going to give you longevity. Everybody knows that. He's not. I mean, this is the same guy that complained when somebody bunted against him. I mean, come on. It's baseball. <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not knocking him, but if I had to choose and somebody falls out this rotation, you want Sonny Gray to, to, to perform better because Sonny can go seven, eight innings. He can do that. He's younger. Yep. He, he, has, he has solid knees. CC's on a bum knee that requires a brace for him to pitch. If he's not performing, he might serve better the Yankees in that left-handed role out of the pen to get those big lefty outs. That could work well. So my my idea of the Yankees is not to have that heart feelings for a player and, and fall in love with them, but to put the best team on the field. That's what they need to do. And I'm almost in the sense of I'm kind of against trading a guy like Frazier in a way because – he shows what he's capable of and what he can become. Exactly, and, and, and in my opinion, it makes absolutely no sense to trade Frazier for the simple fact that Gardner is up there in age. And I mean, the Yankees want to build for the future. You got your replacement for Gardner right there. Correct, and uh, just the scary thing uh, about that is he's had opportunities to come up and play. They don't give it to him. You know, th th there's just, by looking at it on the outside looking in, again, we don't know everything that happens. We don't know everything that really goes on. But looking at it on the outside looking in, you would say to yourself, man, this 23-year-old this is hitting 340, 330 in AAA. He comes up, performs well. Why is he never playing over anyone? So, yeah, trading away Sonny Gray with a package of Brandon Drury and some mid-level prospects or whatever just makes more sense. Maybe the Yankees can keep Frazier, but who knows? He's considered one of the top Yankees prospects, and he's just devouring triple a so ladies and gentlemen that has been the salmonetti source check him out at salmonetti source at twitter salmonetti source on youtube make sure you cop one of those stop it t-shirts when they are available like always yankees fans this has been felix from nynews.com share like and subscribe i will check you out next time